This is Mind Pump. Today, we had one of our favorite people in the space back on the show. You've heard her before, Jen Cohen. She has a very popular and successful podcast, Habits and Hustle. And this woman knows how to get what she wants. She's extremely charismatic. She's got some of the best people skills we've ever seen. We don't know how she does half of what she does, but she does it and she crushes. So if you're into success, if you're into entertaining stories or learning how to live fearlessly, you do not want to miss this episode. Also, we are launching a brand new program, MAPS Performance Advance. This is a workout program for people who want to perform like hardcore athletes. By the way, you could customize this program for the type of sport that you play. But this program literally develops strength, power, speed, and agility. And because it's a launch, you get a discount off the price. You also get free eBooks. So the so here's what you got to do. Go to mapsp2.com. Use the code PA launch. That gets you $80 off. And then here's the eBooks that get included for free. Grip strength reference guide and eat for performance. All right, here comes the show. We don't know how you do half the shit that you do. Really, we don't. Yeah. I That's mean, we so know, but sweet. we don't. It's insane. Really? It's a, yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you say it to all the guests? No. No, <laughs> no. no. I remember no. when you started your podcast, and now you're, you've you got these celebrities and stuff on your show. That's like, actually a girl. really good conversation for the podcast yes. is to talk about the the art of being able to negotiate, to build relationships, to get people to do that. That's a crazy skill. It Thank is a skill. You. It's Thank also you. an undervalued skill in business that a lot of people don't know to even ask about because, I mean, I 100% know that this, the success that I've had is completely on the shoulders of other men and women that I stand on, 100%. It's the ability to build relationships with other brilliant people and attach myself to them. And very few people know how to do that. You do that exceptionally well. Do you know where that skill comes from? Well, this is what I really believe. I think that when I've leaned really hard into what I'm, I guess, maybe more naturally good at because I'm so bad at most things that I had to learn to be resourceful and really kind of exacerbate that quality. That's the first part. That's where we're a lot of like. Right um, seriously, I think that's really, that's probably how it is because you are very similar yeah. probably in mm -hmm. that way. And I think I, I think that the, the authenticity that I'm not trying to be someone I'm, I, I'm not, I'm very authentic. Either you like it or you don't, you like me or you don't. And so like there the people that I do get along with, well, it kind of, it, it the, the relationship really kind of flourishes. You also have this trait that my wife talks about that uh, like she th she thinks I'm the only one that has it, but I think you have this trait too, where you have this ability to be kind of dickish, but then people <laughs> st still love you. You get away it. with it. You get away with it. Like having like, taking your seat. Maybe. Yes. Well, no, that yes. wasn't. No, that's, <laughs> a good, no, that's, that's not dickish, yeah, but that's, that's a, a, that is a good example though. Yeah, like yeah, that could yeah. come off really yeah. like rough for somebody yeah, to yeah. handle that. And you, so you have this ability to be very, Direct, sometimes brash, borderline dickish is what I've been dickish. told. I'm yeah. a dick, basically. Right. Okay, I like <laughs> but, that. But then, <laughs> but then, you, but then also totally we cool have the, you know, this like right? redeeming quality of like, how does that person not hate her? Or like, uh, but they you, sometimes do hate me though. Right? That, well, I mean, that's a. That's, I don't think so. Who hates you? I a don't lot know of people. Doesn't like you. Really? I mean, I wouldn't say a people that may they, they may not hate me, but they don't appreciate my dickishness mm -hmm. as much, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Because this is the truth, though, right? Like I. Again, not to kind of like belabor my point of like asking for what you want and being bold. Sorry about that, Justin, but it I is mean, coming up. <laughs> you know, the truth is like- Every you, podcast. I guess, every so podcast. You know. But no, but it's the truth. It's yeah. like, you know, the way I see it, like, well, if, if you do something in a nice-ish way, people usually respond. It's when you are kind of like, when you come from a bad place or you're, or you're, um, I don't know, like just a dick, but maybe you're saying I am a dick. So I don't really know. No, there's why a difference. It what it is, is that most people that want something, right. They, they try and find a roundabout way or manipulative way to get there. Yeah. I'm Where not people like you and I have this ability to cut right through the bullshit. I'm, I'm just gonna go right for it. It might rub you the wrong way. It's unfiltered, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's well received because it isn't like you're hiding it. You're, you're trying to like do something to get something on somebody later on. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I think it is? Is it really kind of sum it all up. I think that what my skill is, I have a high EQ. I think that I can read oh, yeah. people sure. and situations sure. fast and then adapt accordingly. So knowing like how you guys are, like how you are so, like how you kind of are so 
like you, you handsome. torment oh. Sal with your I was gonna say <laughs> I handsome also. <laughs> handsome also, of course. That's obvious. Yeah, that's some smart, right? funny, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, amazing. Go ahead, kill And yourself yeah. exactly. <laughs> and yourself dep everyone's very self deprecating in this room. They don't take themselves seriously. Like yeah. I can play to that, right? Yeah. If you guys were super conservative and really like I, I will pick up on that th that and I will kind of I would kind of, I won't be as You're brash. a chameleon. You're a chameleon. Yeah, like I can adapt yeah. and I, I can kind of, com I can become a chameleon when necessary based on who I'm around. Yeah. However, if I don't connect with somebody and like I can feel it really quickly. Yeah, it's like oil and water. It's like oil and water. Yeah. And then like- And you just don't waste your time. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just don't even so like bother. So I know where that skill comes from for me. Do you know where that comes from? Yes. I think I don't, I, I think when I was younger, I didn't feel good enough. I probably felt like insecure when I was younger or I didn't feel smart or whatever that was. And so I, I literally like I, I had to, I had to really kind of go big on the other qualities and like build them up. So like I, because I was a bad student, I had to learn to be resourceful and become much and build on my personality. Right. Because mm -hmm. I didn't really think that I was smart enough. Yeah, yeah. And so I built on my personality or like I built on my sense of humor. And so, or I didn't think I was pretty enough. So I built on, you know what I mean? So because I thought I had a deficiency in one spot, I really try to excel or build up another area. Yeah, yeah. And so, and I think everybody who feels that way does that. Like you, in a way, like being mediocre or feeling like I was mediocre was a real strength to me at you, that point. Well, you're obviously not mediocre, um, but do you do you think it's harder for women to be straightforward and bold than for men? Do you think that yeah. you're perceived? Okay, because, talk about that because- I, I can see how a man, you know, they might say something like, well, oh yeah, he's, he's intense, but where the woman, they might be like, oh, she's bitchy or something like or that. Right. She's too aggressive. Yeah. She's too, well, yeah, because I think what comes, what happens a lot is that if a woman is too bold or a woman is too aggressive, they come across too masculine. Mm. And so that can turn off, um, it, it can turn off a man. And this sure. is a problem, actually. I, I think this is becoming a really big problem in society, <laughs> right? Because what happens, and that's why a lot of very successful women are single mm. and can't find men because they, when they're, when they have success and they have a stronger personality, it takes sometimes away from the femininity. And then like, it becomes very combative with, a, with male energy. Yeah. So it's what I find to be very, very difficult. And it's, a, it actually is like a delicate science is how to balance femininity and masculinity at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you be aggressive? Like, how can you be assertive and ambitious but also keep your femininity without coming across the, too masculine. This is a reason why I'm so curious and interested to hang out with you and your husband. So like I, I've, I've brought it up multiple times. So many where, times. Yes, yeah. where I want Katrina and I to hang out with you and her because I know that. And I also know that it takes a hell of a guy to balance that with you. Mm -hmm. So like I already know he's going to be this guy that I'm going to like because – and, and so talk about how you're able, because you have to be able to do that. And I know he's a super confident, good looking, successful dude. So it's not like you married some like passive, exactly. soft spoken, wussy kind of guy. And that's what typically would happen. That, right? It is what normally happens. I, I'm what just normally, being real. Like, no, no, no. I, no. What I normally mean. happens with a woman that has a very strong personality like you, she bulldozes most men and the only, <laughs> and, and, and then marries a guy. No, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Marries a guy. Which also, it's also builds resentment. Right. Who is, who's ends up being passive and whatever yeah. like that. And he takes on all the feminine ener energy like that. You're I don't. Right, so, by so the way. and I, I have a wife that is uh, not like that. She's very like you, and so we have. Uh, that's why I want the four of us to get together because I know we will have this interesting dynamic. Because it takes a very special partner to be able to navigate that. I agree with you, and this is what I want to say. I can I, let's talk about this for a moment because I do believe there's a lot of there's so much truth in what you're saying. So to your point, I think when like Noah, he's super confident. He is my biggest supporter and fan. He is like he has all the things. Like you know what I mean? He is attractive, he's successful. He basically we have a very similar we're very similar and he's a, a guy version of me, yeah. which by the way can backfire a lot. Sure. Like a lot of times that doesn't work very well. Um and what happens typically is I feel like girls who have a very strong personality either have that, like a guy who's super confident, who like, I believe women need to have a man in their life who is better than them, who is more successful than them, who is richer than them, who is more 
you know, athletic than them, more, more in shape than them. I think you have to have that type of situation or else the woman loses respect or loses attraction. I don't believe this thing where it's like, oh yeah, I'm a girl who has, I'm, I'm, I'm smart, I'm pretty, I'm successful. And I want to be with a guy who is less than that, who is less successful, who has less money, who is less fit than I am. It's impossible. No, you know, there's the, plenty of research on this. There's it's a lot of research women, on this. Women date a lateral and up. up. Lat yeah. They yeah. want yeah. to. Yeah. But doesn't mean they do. That, no, no you're but right. that's, that's you're right. typically yeah. what they want. They that's want. That's what they look for. Whereas a man tends to go across and down in some cases. Well, there's, there's that there's that, there's that energy that, that men uh, tend to want and women tend to want. And when it's flipped, uh, you often see resentment build uh, either on, on both sides. Well, the data shows that. What I think happens is, this is what we're talking about, the um uh, balancing the masculine and the feminine energy in a woman who is successful or of a strong personality, the women who end up with these men who are more meek and insecure and more feminine than them. They become their mothers, don't they? They always do. It's mm -hmm. But it's because it's the women who aren't able to acknowledge and recognize that they have to still play in the feminine. Mm. They have to, they can't always be the masculine, hard, did you have rough to, way. Did you have to teach yourself that with Noah? And is that something that you guys have evolved or did you have it with him? So interestingly enough, like in my personality, as strong as I come, I am in a lot of ways, typically what happens, I think in my personal life, I tend to uh, not acquiesce is the wrong word, but I tend to play into my feminine more on the personal. Like I, if I'm with a guy who is much more alpha than me, which is a complete like necessity, I automatically become much more uh, like demure yeah. and feminine. Yeah. It's when I'm with a guy who is so like B, like so like what we're saying, like the ones who are kind of like beta. the beta, beta yeah. who are kind of like more, more feminine and they're not as this or not as that. I feel an I feel like I have to take control. I yeah. have to be more alpha. I have to be more this. So like it's something that happens like very innately yeah. in my and, and I think I pick up on that. So like I part of like the EQ that we we're talking about earlier is like knowing and having the self-awareness to understand when you need to play up your masculine, when you need to play down your feminine. And the truth of the matter is, like a lot of the times, like you're always saying to me, like, how'd you get this done? How'd you get mm -hmm. that done? Like what well, Truth is, because I know very instinctually when I have to be more feminine and play into my feminine strengths and when I have to play into my masculine strengths. And I believe if any girl who sits here and tells you that, oh, um, that's not like they don't have to, that's, that does, that's not really, that's not very woke or whatever, like 2024 to say that because it's very like, un, it's very uncouth or very un PC to say that, they're lying to you because you do have to deal with, you have to deal with like other sexes in your life. Like if you're mm -hmm. if you're a girl and you are trying to get ahead, you you play into the strengths that are going to help you move forward. And if you say that you don't, you're lying. Mm -hmm. So walk me through like that reading process. You're just meeting me for the first time. We've never met before. I, and it's and I okay, but what I will walk you through. But it doesn't happen. It's not like. I, it, it happens naturally. Like I, know. I don't even know what's happening. I know, I know, I know. Because but, it's part, it's like so who I am already. Yeah, but you've done it so many times that you know, walk your side. You know, there's probably okay. A so story. like for example, like you and I ought, like you and I, like look at this, look at the shirt behind you with the Rodman ninety one. Yeah. I have exactly the same thing in my house. We talked about yeah, this, right? Right. So like in my gym. Yeah. So you and I automatically have like a good banter and a good chemistry. I'm not talking romantic chemistry, so everyone calm down. Yeah, but relax. I'm saying like, <laughs> you and I like get along Skin really well. Here, like yeah. we like jive really well. So I, it's easy to kind of like vibe off of you and like talk with you. So like, I, because I feel like it's natural and, and, and um, easy, I'll like, I have no filter. So I'll say whatever, I'll do whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll, you know, I'll joke around with you. And like in the, in joking and like all that, you build more of a rapport. Yeah. So to me, I try to keep everything like very like fun and easy yeah. because that's how people end up liking you. You become much more likable. I don't like when you're too like conservative and formal and like say all the right things and do all the right things. It's really hard to like, 
build past a certain point in a relationship. Yeah, you're also doing something subconsciously, whether you know it or not, though, is that you're reading when you're doing that. Like you, you're letting, you're helping someone let their guard down. Yeah. So like you, you and your body language. I can right. read your body. Right, right. I can look. I can read your eyes. Yes. I can read how you're looking at me. I can yeah. read where you're, like how you're sitting. Like you're sitting like this. Like you're open. Like you're not like staying like this away from me. Yeah. Like all these like little like intricacies of like body language and how you're re responding to me. I pick up on those things exceptionally quick. It's like kind of like I'm like a savant in that way. Like yeah. I just, I think my brain, that's how I've become successful. It's because I can pick up on social cues, emotional cues, body cues yeah. really quickly. It's because of your adapt. childhood. You well, said you had to practice it so much. Well, there's 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 uh, like all skills. I'm sure there's an innate uh, part of it, but then there's also the practice part of it, which, which means you've probably put yourself out there and talked to a lot of people and put yourself in a lot of situations that a lot of people might consider scary. In other words, if you want to hit the ball, you got to swing a lot. A lot. It's so, very true. Right, right. So you've probably put yourself out there a lot, talking to a lot of different people, even though, and, and now what comes along with that is a lot of rejection. That's the thing I'm really interested in because that's what prevents people from doing that is rejection. Why don't you ask that girl out? Oh, what if she says no? Why don't you go talk to that person that you want to get on their show or you want them on your yes. show or whatever? Ah, uh, what if they, it's weird, it's awkward or whatever? You you seem to be okay with rejection. I am okay with rejection. Okay. I, I, like, I, I'm very okay with rejection. I'm How many really times have I rejected her with companies? Dude? Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> exactly. Okay, exactly. She's giving me shit the last yeah, Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm set, I'm set these guys like, so Adam many brands <laughs> and they just keep anything. on like shooting me down. Adam is very, just for you, just for your audience, they're highly particular of what companies totally. and brands they very, work with. It yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah, I've, I've sent them right so there, yeah. many things to like look at and Adam poo poos 99%, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay? And there's money on the table. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. And it's money on the table. So yeah. these guys are as, are as legit as that. they come. No, yeah. it's true. Yeah. It really is true. Yeah. But now I even forgot the, the rejection. question. The rejection. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is what I, okay. This is what I was going to say to you. I think there's a few things. I think that I am completely immune and desensitized to that feeling of rejection. And I think that like with anything in life, you do something over and over again. And so many times it doesn't like, it doesn't bother you as much. So I've had so much rejection in my life. I've had so many failures in my life that at this point, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel also like the more fail, the more things I've failed at, the more opportunities have actually mm -hmm. opened. So why not try? And I always think like when I wake up in the morning, I always think like, well, why not me? And if it can happen to that person, why couldn't it happen to me? Like there is like this like naivety about my personality. Like I never like see anything as my shortcoming. So like, so like even now, like I'm old, I'm not 22 anymore, but I don't let that stop me or hinder me from attempting to try something. So I'll always say to myself, like, well, what's the worst that can happen? I try it. It doesn't work. All right, I'll move on. I'm nothing mm -hmm. lost. And so if you reframe and shape every thought into that type of mindset, then you won't even allow yourself that, uh, that chance or opportunity to count but yourself you, you, out. You have to have a strong internal sense of security for that to even yes. work because There's a, if I, it, look, if, if, you know, if I, if a little kid comes up to me and <clears> says, you're not strong, I don't care. Like we have a little kid, like it's not going to bother me. Right. But if I was 14 years old and another 14 year old kid came up to me and said, you're not strong, I might feel, might feel insecure because I wasn't already secure with myself. So you must also have this kind of internal security where you're like, yeah, I already know who I am. You, yes. You, she cool. also hit the three greatest predictors of success in somebody too, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said, so there's, there's a level of narcissism, which a healthy narcissism mm -hmm. yeah. that you believe, why not and me? Self -belief. Yeah. I should yeah. be able to do that. Right? right. Then there's the other crippling part of I'm not good enough. All these things that I'm not good enough for right, everybody right, else right, that right. you have and this drive and this vision and goal of trying to reach that. It's a, it's the greatest predictor of success. Mm -hmm. Those three, those three qualities. Really? Yeah. And you just literally nailed them in, in order right there. And so you have this thing where it's like, yeah, why not me? I should be able to do that. You have this also understanding that like, oh, I'm not enough in all these other areas. So I got to overcompensate in this well, other thing. Yeah. And this ability to focus and be on a goal. Yeah. And then it, it, it results in success. Yeah. And I think also overcoming adversity, and it doesn't have to be a major trauma that you've overcome. But I think that a lot of times you build your confidence with basically seeing yourself win, even at small, small things. And I trained my brain really young for this, right? Like when I was small, I naturally would 
because I had to be more resourceful because I didn't feel smart enough, pretty enough, all the enoughs. And I bolstered up my other qualities, like my personality and my and my and my sense of humor and my resourcefulness. Uh, it worked out for me. And because I had these little wins over time when I was young, it built up a true self-worth and a self-confidence in myself to make attempts. And that's why I was going to say a couple of things to you. First of all, that's why I think it's really important for kids when they're young to start building their confidence. And they do that by uh, by trying and failing and by, trying and succeeding. By resilience, yeah. but self. I mean, that's funny. I'm, I'm actually working with a company called Legends now, which is all about building confidence in kids with these five-minute exercises. It's actually incredible. Mm. You guys should, I'll if you guys have kids, it's like if you're a kid between like, if you are if you have a kid between six and 11, mm -hmm. it actually is something that you should really mm. work on. And I'll tell you why. Because it's about self-talk, self-efficacy, you know, self-confidence and, you know, self-efficacy is one of the big ones, right? Because if you, if you feel you can do something, you'll, you'll attempt at it, right? Yeah. So how do you do that? And you have to start with these things at a young age, building this resilience. The problem is today in society, the coddle culture, parents will do everything for their kids. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're creating these very fragile children, totally. yeah. mm -hmm. right? Where the kids that are growing up now are very different than how when we grew up, yeah. right? And that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried when I look around at my kids now and the parents and all the things, the parents, like everyone's getting a participation trophy. The parents are not allowing the kids to fail yeah. and they're not building grit. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, grit is the most important quality, yeah. I think, to learn to be successful in life. Do you think, now I, I'm going to say this first because I don't want this to come across. I think you're a very attractive woman. I think you're very beautiful. So you say you weren't good looking as a kid, whatever. Oh my God. But do say you it think, again. No, 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 I want to say that first because do you think that that would have hampered Say it again. Do you think that that would have hampered you as a kid if to be attractive? To be told you're yeah. so pretty, you're so beautiful, you're so, and then to feel like, oh, this is my value. Yes, exactly. So listen, this is the thing. I don't, I, I don't want to come across like, you know, oh, I was like the ugliest kid or I don't mean it like that, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> you know, but I remember there was one girl that was like known to be the most beautiful girl in school. Yeah. And so that is why, and like, I, so you compared yourself. I compared like, yeah. myself and I always hated, and you're going to be, I always hated my nose. I always wanted a nose job my entire life. And and my mom, my mom would take me to the doctor, and I, I've talked not even for like my nose, but like for my physical, because yeah. my mother would always say I shouldn't get one. And my and I said to the doctor, Mom, I, I want to get my nose fixed. And he's like, It's not that your nose is too big; your face is just too small. The doctor Jennifer. said, that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I remember. I so I remember thinking, Oh shit, my, my nose really is that big, <laughs> and so that's why I thought I was ugly, and then. I was always afraid of, I still am to this day, of surgery. I'll never do anything because mm. I'm scared of it. But that's where but that ugliness came from. So then I would work on like my body. I'd work on my hair. I'd work mm. on, but that's what I meant. I don't think I'm ugly. And I think I grew out of that stage because yeah. things worked out for me after. You know, I also didn't, you know, whatever. The point is, why am I even digressing to my looks? Yeah. If someone said to me when I was younger, yes, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful all the time. I think what would have happened as everything would be, I would be only focused on keeping you think that's my, your value. on my look and that would be my value. Yeah. But because, and by the way, I should say, I was considered to be really pretty and cute as I grew up. I should I don't want to lie because I don't, people are going to be like, that's bullshit. She was yeah. not ugly when she was small, but you know what your I'm saying. Your perception is everything though. But my, exactly. But my perception yeah. is everything. But because I felt that, that's why it was even more incumbent upon me to build out all these other yeah. skills and assets that I thought that's, I had. That's my fe my fear with my girls, especially, is because so much of media and uh, places so much value on beauty, especially for girls. Mm -hmm. That um, and I tell this to my daughter all the time, like you're, you know, because she, you know, she's she's pretty, and so and her friends tell her, I said, honey. That is so down the list of important qualities. I said, first of all, you you are a beautiful young lady, but that's going to go away at some point, mm -hmm. and, gonna, and it, everybody loses that at some point. I said that is not, not you, your, Sal. I said yeah, right. I said that <laughs> is not your value, you know, because if that becomes your value, which is not that valuable, people think it's so it's not. It's a very short window, and then you lose that, and what are you left with? You're left with nothing. Also, this is what I learned really quickly. I agree with you. 
I also think that people overvalue the importance of looks. Of course. Uh, and I think that that's what, like a lot of these girls I know, even now, by the way, with Instagram and all this other bullshit, you could have the, 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 the hottest smoke show on the planet. And then you get to know this girl and she's as lame as they come, as stupid as can yeah, be, yeah. and have no other qualities to like to to call from. You don't want to be around no. her. You don't want to spend time with her. If you're a guy, you may want to sleep with her once or twice, but that's it. There's her level of actual self-esteem is so below like it's so terrible. Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed in life, and that's what I was saying about how really not important looks are, you have to be. Let's be honest. You have to at least meet a threshold. If you're sure. attractive enough, well, look healthy. That's I think healthy is is what you're looking for. Healthy yeah. or okay or attractive enough. Yes. Right. But if you are, if you walk into a room and you're super confident and you can carry a conversation and you're charming and you are, you've got charisma and all those things, that makes a person who's a five. A ten. Sure. If you walk into a room and you're a ten in looks, but you have you're a zero in everything else, you become a two, mm -hmm. right? And so to, to kind of wrap this all around, I've never ever felt insecure or less than when I've been around the biggest supermodels of all time going to a room. I never felt insecure or less than because like I knew my value was way above just what I look like. Right. And I and I truly believe that from within. And you can you I think being around people who also don't only value what you look like is really important because growing up, you know, my mom and dad would always be like, you're so beautiful or you're so this. Or, so like it built up my sense of self and my self-esteem. So like as a parent, don't, 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 I guess, don't just point out things that are so trivial in the long run. Like make sure that you are pointing out things that have like longevity to them, mm -hmm. you know, and that like effort is more important than how you look or like work ethic or productivity yeah. or whatever that is. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to hear, I want to hear about what prompted you to write this. I mean, the title is, had you told me you were going to write a book and what should you put the title? Well, this on? is a year anniversary, right? One I know year. it's actually, this is a, so exactly. It's odd. It's bigger, better, bolder. And now it's paperback. It's like sitting by itself on the table. How's it done? How's it done by the way? It's done good. It's done well. You know what? I, I've been remiss in pushing it as, as hard as I should have just because of all the projects I like get myself involved with. And funnily enough, as pushy as I am and as, as aggressive as I am, when it comes to stuff like my, my book or this, I, I have like, like, I don't love doing that. I want people to read it and love it and enjoy it and like take pieces of it because without me having to like jam it down their throat. Mm. But how it, what it is basically, it's all these principles on how to become bolder in your life. So it's, it's not just a one, like a one man shop for like, if you want to become bolder in your business, it's about how do you stand up for yourself and ask for what you want in all areas of life, your personal life, your business life in, in, in relationships. Cause the truth of the matter is to be happy and feel fulfilled. It's not about just like taking care of one piece of the pie and being, having a lot of money. It's not, it's to me, like, that's like, it's, it's a silly thing to even think of. It's about having the very fulfilling relationships and feeling satiated in who you are. And like people don't now, especially in where we're, where we're living and in, in, in the society, we don't, we don't kind of take that into consideration. We're all on social media. We're not like having these really satiating, fulfilling relationships. And it's like, unless you design and curate the life that you want, you're not going to have it mm. because there's too many distractions. Well, tell, tell us about, I want to hear about your podcast because I remember when you started it. I remember you, you, you came on our show you're like, you know, I should start a podcast. Hey, she had that same exact feeling. Like, these assholes could do it. Why yeah, can't yeah. I do That's it? I like, <laughs> if, the, if, if these yahoos could do a podcast, why can't I, I mean, do it? I hope we inspire yeah, lots of people. You really did inspire me. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. But for you, that. Easy. But you, you, you crush it. You're absolutely crushing you. it. And you're not just interviewing um, interesting people. You're, you, you even are interviewing people you debate with or disagree with. Mm -hmm. I think you had someone on recently that, uh, you know, there's a, the, what's going on with, you know, between Israel and, and Palestine. You had somebody come on that was representing. I had the son the, of Hamas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How did you, 
organize that. That one was insane. Okay, so talk yeah. about that. How did you work? Were you afraid to put that up and to speak? Like, what was the deal? First of all, by the way, I don't know what if you're, I, I'm very much, very outspoken and yes. become a big activist for what's happening with Israel. And um, because truthfully, and you may like lose subscribers because I just said that, but this is the truth. I feel that there's been a lot of hate thrown at the Israeli side and it's completely it's like it's it's unfair to be honest and what happened on October 7th really awakened a giant in me and it really bothered me in mm. a big way because it was such a brutal massacre and because of propaganda and spin and less Jewish people than there are of uh on the other side uh, we've had like we've gotten the shorter end of the stick, and I believe it's really important to speak up for what you know is right, and to and to do what's right. So, so how did you make that so, podcast happen? So, Who because that? of that, yeah. I've I chose to spend a little bit of my time speaking up and getting people who have the real perspective, who've been there, done that, lived it on the podcast. So let me just say that out. Okay. okay? With that being said, the son of Hamas. So who, who is, is the son of Hamas? Okay. Know who that so is the right son now. of Hamas is the son of the leader of Hamas. So the guy who started Hamas back when is this guy, this guy who I, who I had, Musab, on my podcast is his son. And, he, and, and he he's in here? hiding. Are you kidding me? No. He's in hiding. He is one of the hardest people to get to. He's impossible to get to. Not even one of the hard, he is the, like, it's impossible. Why was he in hiding? Is he, is because, he... People, because people want to kill him. Oh. Hum, like all the... All the uh, pro Palestinians uh, hate him because oh, so he's, he's speaking. It. He's oh. speaking out against them. So he. Ca so let me just back up a second. So he left. He basically became a double spy. So he was working for the Israeli intelligence, but while also working for his dad. He was his dad's right hand man. That's crazy. Wow. So it's like the story is the most compelling. How he, did you even find that out? Well it's like it's because so he had a movie made about him called The Green Pan uh The Green Panther. Is that what it's called? Uh the Green not the Green Panther. I'm like it's, it's look up Son of Hamas movie. Oh it's it's, it's 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 he's very famous. Um so he had a he had a major documentary made about him. He had a major book written about him, and then when the Green Prince, the Green Prince. Thank you. I don't, I don't know why I said the Panther. The Green Prince. Mm -hmm. The movie is called The Green Prince. His book was called The Green Prince, and he was he's very well known. And when this whole thing happened on October seventh, he came out and started speaking out against the atrocities, basically. Mm -hmm. So everyone knew him. And he was speaking out at very specific news outlets, but no one knew where he was because everything was blurred in the back. Or he he started doing videos himself with a blurred background. Mm. And so I was like, I need to get to this guy. I need to get to this guy. So I started to like, you know, talk to a bunch of uh, people who knew people who, are, who got me his uh like basically he got me his email address and i emailed him now were you okay were you were you at all scared because you're saying he's got like a target on his oh, back he's got and a, a major target on his back he doesn't go anywhere without a shit ton of security wow. so i email him and i got this girl who was kind enough to help me get get like kind of get to the right person like she was kind of like my partner in crime her name is kyla um we got to him and he emailed me back like days later saying I'm in L like I'm in LA today and tomorrow I want to come on your podcast I was like okay so he's like he sent me I kid you not he sent me a pin of where to pick him up and at what time a pin mm. it's like like basically come to this location at this time I'll be waiting for you so he assumed that I was coming with like a trailer of security no, I drive up in my car. Like it was like the Keanu Reeves back circa yeah. when I was 17 years old and my yeah. mom's Cutlass Supreme. Yeah. This time I'm driving a Range Rover by myself. <laughs> Same thing though. Yeah. And I literally drove by myself to this location, waiting in my car, looking from right to left, seeing if he's going to come out anytime soon. 
I called my sister because I was waiting like five or six, 10 minutes already. And I'm like, I think this was a scam. Like, I don't think it was him. I think someone else like responded. Like, maybe he's not coming. Maybe he's not. And as she's like, yeah, of course it is. Probably for sure a scam. Like, you should get out of there. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. I hang up my sister. I look behind my rear view mirror and I see this guy in sunglasses really like running towards like, like on the street, like walking really fast. And I'm like, oh my God, it must be him. So I get out of my car. I'm like, Masab? And he's like, yes. Are you Jennifer? I'm like, yes. He's like, where's the security? I'm like, I am the security. Let's go. (laughs) So we get into my car. And of course, of course, there is so much traffic. It's like in the middle of rush hour in LA. Okay. So I'm stuck now. This is what happened, Adam. You'll die. I can't believe I haven't told you the story. (laughs) I know you haven't. Okay. So then we're in the car and he says to me, you know, like, I'm very recognizable. I got to be very careful. I'm like, I'm like, and I say to him, I'm like, come on, like, who's going to recognize you? You have a big beard. You look like every other Middle Eastern guy. Come on. <laughs> and, 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 so, <laughs> and, we, and we drive and we're then on Robertson, which is like a big street in LA. Yeah. We're at a, we're at a, a, a red light. And basically with this rush hour traffic and like my windows are kind of tinted, like they're quasi tinted, but not fully tinted. And this woman was in front of me. She put her baby in the car, like on the, she was putting her, not like she was putting her baby or young kid in this car. And then she was coming around to go into her uh, driver's seat. And she like looked into my car window and like did a quick double tape like a double take and she ended up like tripping on her foot falling because she saw him in my in my wow. passenger seat and he looks at me he's like told you and I'm like <laughs> I guess you're right and then we kept on driving and then he's we're like driving in the car can you imagine what am I talking to this guy about in the car for like an hour yeah. before even the podcast we're driving up we're going into like we're turning right into my 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 street for my house and he's like uh, I want some coffee. Can we go to Starbucks? And I was like, um, okay. So then I go like around to go to like a Starbucks, like 25 minutes again away from my oh house. My God. And we go to the Starbucks and like we're going in and people are like looking and double taking and like freaking out, like thinking it might be him, not him. And then we have we have that. Then we go into my house. We do like a two and a half hour podcast, three hours. He ends up playing with my kid like basketball. And then he asked me to take him to Whole Foods and then to uh, Era One. And people went bananas. Yeah. Okay. Bananas because they recognized him and people were like taking videos and pictures and he was getting really upset. And so, cause he didn't want to have that like type of attention. Yeah. And so then we, I had to like get him in the car and then drive him home. That to say, the only re- like, it was crazy, but I will say that the only reason why that happened was because nobody expected him to be at Whole Foods. No one expected right. him to be at Starbucks, so he felt safe. okay, yeah. safe. Yeah, because nobody's waiting there potentially. Nobody's but- waiting there. It's when somebody mm. knows you're going to be somewhere is where it becomes a yeah. big danger, right? Yeah. And I wasn't allowed to post my stories until like because they're too uh, reta- real time or whatever. Until re- re- Are real you time. were you at any moment like like afraid or worried? I, everyone yeah. asks me that. They're like, "Are you like people are now going to come to your house and like?" I you think know, this is the naive part that you talk. This about. is the naivety as a strength. I d- I I was so excited, <laughs> right? You didn't I, know you were supposed to be yeah. terrified. I was right? I, I was like so like I was so like excited about the fact that I got this guy to not only come and do my podcast, but like do it in person, do it in per- not on Zoom, but do yeah. it in person yeah. at my house for like so many hours. And then as I'm interviewing him, he says to me like, this is like, you are interrogating me worse than the Mossad and the Israeli army because wow. I was asking like every detail because I was so interested in like, well, how do they, uh, how, do, how does Hamas like indoctrinate people? Where do they hide these things? How did, what happened to you? How, like he was telling me details on that podcast that he's never really explained Did that before. cause anything? Like, did you get, did anybody contact you from, sec- from like our own security? Nobody did contact- anybody say anything? The podcast went like has done exceptionally well. Of like you know, like I'm not big on in, uh, on YouTube as you as you know, um, and but that podcast crushed it, and like people are sharing it and resharing it, and I get contacted by all sorts of exceptionally high profile people. Like I sh- I deserve a Peabody for that award. Mm. I mean for that uh, <laughs> podcast because I was I, I like 
drilled him down to like, I like he would say something and then try to move on to the next topic. And I'd be like, no, 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 wait, go back. You were saying this precise thing. What does that mean? How do they do it? Explain exactly. Mm. And the, the reason why I was doing that was because I was, I wanted people to understand at the core level of what is really happening there because he was on the he was on the Palestinian side. He was on the Israeli side. He understands the truth of what was happening, and it was fascinating to really understand like his life. His life is so insane, and now he's living like in hiding. Like, do you know how crazy that is? Yeah. Like to not be a you to be, against be your a normal, own father. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and like. He, and his fat, like not only that, like his entire family, like he's been, uh, he's been did, obviously ostracized. ostracized from his uh, his entire family. How did the falling out with his dad happen? I mean, how did he, how did he end up going the other direction? Because he, I think what happened from what he, from what he explains is he, that culture is so atrocious in itself. Like it's about it's about he explained like how he was raped as a young boy and that was nobody defended him and it was something he had to just swallow and because they they're it's all about suppression a suppression mm. of your sexuality so like because you're not allowed to have sex with uh, someone who's like a you know your equal yeah. right cuz it's looked down upon unless you're married and all. so then like they're like have they're raping young boys or raping wow. people and he was explaining in detail or he was noticing how like he was put in jail for um, weapons, and he saw in the Israeli prison when he was put when he was arrested for for arm for being armed or whatever. Not for they couldn't keep him there because of well, actually, that's not what happened. What he was explaining was in jail he saw his own people br so brutally kill their own people. Mm. that it like turns something in him where that's when he turned and he mm. saw like how horribly um just how how, how like how disgusting and deprived the culture is that he was grown up in and you don't know what you don't know right like if you only know that then that's your normal yeah. right it's only when you step away and see what life really is on another side is then when you can actually, by the way, I haven't looked at you once, Justin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You're uh, in a role. I'm not, I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to, I'm like thing. looking here. You're maybe in flow here. state. I'm listening. I, this is a I, crazy I story. I apologize. Yeah. But no, like, don't, don't apologize. His, his, so basically like he saw the depraver, like how, how despicable it was on that side. And I guess what happened was when the movie came out, or the book came out, his dad obviously found out and I think he he played a double he was a double spy for Israel for over ten years. Wow. Yeah. And so he had to like he got them a bunch of information. Did you did you were, did you tell your husband ahead of time like hey I'm gonna go interview this dude yeah, that did, everybody yes. wants to kill. So I mean so laid back. You know what's so interesting? It's not that he's laid back. He's so mired in his own shit of he he works like an animal. He yeah, works yeah. like a, that he. He's like, oh my God, that's great. Anyway, like, that's the thing, like, <laughs> wow. he, and, and then like, I walk in, like, imagine Noah's life with me though. Cause like people are walking in and out of that yeah, house. Mark like, Cuban comes Mark in one Cuban's day. Mark Cuban's walking in <laughs> yeah, right. one minute. And then like the son of Hamas. And like, he's like on a work call. And like the son of Hamas walks by him to play basketball with my kid. And he's like, oh, hey, like, it's like, it's kind of like, oh yeah. Cause the son of Hamas is always just at my house in the middle of the day. You know what I mean? But he's so used to that type of like kookiness and craziness, but he's crazy. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, because I don't think I really spoke with you guys. Maybe I told you, Adam. Do you know that my husband broke his neck and his back six uh, months ago? No, no, I don't know. No, no, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, oh. uh, he was. Uh, he's a daredevil, and he well, and he was on a actually on a mountain bike, and he was going down a mountain bike, oh, wow. and he flipped over the the handlebars and broke his neck and his back, and he like they've never seen anyone walk away from that alive or not paralyzed. Oh wow! It's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. And he did. And now he's fine. Thank God. Oh, wow. But why I'm bringing this up is his constitution is so different and unique than anybody else I've ever met in my entire life yeah. that he walked himself into the hospital. And as like, they're like telling him he has a broken neck, he's like working on a work call. Yeah. Like he didn't miss a freaking beat 
with a yeah. broken neck and a broken wow. back. Yeah, yeah, so that's sad. just the constitution that he has. Wow. You know what I mean? I want, I want to talk about Noah a little more oh, wait, because I, I okay, think I do. I know mean, you want to. I was, I was, no, no, go for it. I, I, want, I, really want, I really am so curious about your guys' relationship because I think that- You should that, have a podcast with Noah on here. I would love to. No, he wouldn't do it. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. But only because he hates the media and all that kind of stuff. That's like Katrina. You, Katrina's like no social media, no nothing. Yeah, she, neither him yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's, she's all anti all that stuff. Yeah. Too. She would never get on here either. So it's so funny. That, I mean, that's, that's why- That's so funny. I will, so the that, part, that's what makes it work really well. I'm think, so yeah. curious. That's why I'm so curious. And I really think that the four of us would just have a blast together for sure. So one of the things that when you have relationships like yours, I think like mine is, and you have this kind of delicate balance of uh, masculine and feminine, is sometimes- you have to play the opposite role a little bit. It, and can you think of things in your relationship like that? I'll give you a head start with mine. Like, so like it took me and it took me a while in the relationship to be okay with this. Like there was this part of me that, you know, uh, and, and this is going to come off probably wrong and someone would be mad at me, but I don't care. So it's just, it is what it is. <laughs> I had a real hard time with Katrina not caring about our house being as neat and organized and clean as ever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I remember like going through like a year or two of like really being frustrated with that. Yeah. And then I, then I realized like, okay, if this bothers me so much, this is not in it's her second nature to do this. Why don't I just fucking, I'll be the dishes guy. You know what I'm saying? She's all, it's not like she's not doing something for us and the team. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's assumed like another role that she always does. And like, I've now become the person who does the dishes every single night like that. And it, but it took like years in the relationship for me to kind of shift that dynamic. I get what you're saying. So is there things like that in your relationship that- It's interesting you say that. Like, will you yes. get out and change the tire for the car if the car gets flat or something? I mean, I won't, he doesn't even know how to do that, unfortunately. Okay, so but I will say, I think like your, I'm actually very similar to your wife because I'm very disorganized. Yeah. And like, I, but actually this is kind of like, I'm bad at, I'm bad. This is not going to be that shocking with administrative, with uh, organization, with like the kids calendar. Like I forget to put things in the calendar. So he's had to assume that role uh. more. So what role have I had to assume more? I mean, the difference is he travels so much yeah. where I feel like I have to kind of step in a lot. That's the big issue is because his job requires a lot of traveling. So like it, I had to take a back, I, I know it's shocking to hear, but like sometimes it t I have to take a back seat because I don't want my kids not to have a parent of all, like around sure, all the time, right. right? So there's that whole issue. And I kind of feel like he's very good with like the schedule, like organize, like kind of like organizing and kind of like, understanding like the, the the calendar more and I'm really bad at that. And I think he had to become better at that because I'm bad at it. I'm trying to think what I had to do. Um, I had to be around. I had to kind of, I had to kind of adapt my ambition because of his schedule. I had to take a little bit of a backseat hmm. a little bit. Does that cause like a, a, yes. a, okay. So it is hard. Well, it causes It's got to yeah. be really difficult too, because you guys, and this is a very, I have the same, we have similar type challenge, right? Katrina. I mean, I remember when Katrina was still an executive for a massive construction company, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, working till 10 at night while I'm having all this success. Yeah. And then we have a kid and, and it, thank God she had the epiphany herself. Like, what am I doing? Like I'm leaving my sick kid at home and I'm taking off to this, this construction job that really is not contributing anything to our financial with all in pursuit of, you know, wanting to have her own thing and be a killer herself and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was like a, I, I think that, ha I think it's like a natural thing. Like this is the thing, right? Like I'm not willing to, uh, uh like work to the point where my kids are going to have to take like to suffer. Right. Like that's just more who I am as a person. I don't want to be that mom. Yeah. And I think the difference between being a total killer and that masculine energy that we talked about before. Yeah versus having still a feminine side. Like part of me has like, I, I guess I have like, I'm a little bit traditional in that sense. Like I want my kids to have a mom. I want to be the one to take my kids to the doctor's appointments. Yeah. I want to be the one to make my kids their breakfast and their lunch. So if those things are going to happen, I'm not able to be the, the workaholic yeah. that it would take to, to do that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, totally. So like I, it's not even so much because of Noah. Noah would be like, okay, just get someone to help. Like, we'll get someone to do those things. I'm like, I'm not okay with that. Right. Like, the thing is, like, the 
like I'm not like that's not how I was raised and I don't want that to be on my kids memories because I think that's really important yeah. so like those are the ways that I feel like that would happen but I will say one thing about Noah is exceptionally social like to a point where it's like it's he'll go to the opening of a paper bag like he will do anything <laughs> I don't want to do that okay <laughs> it's true though like he'll be like oh that paper bag is opening let's go yeah. and I'm I'm much more discerning yeah. and I'm highly I know it's gonna shock you I'm very critical and I don't love everybody like I'm I'm discerning on like who I spend my time with yeah. and what I do and quite honestly, being a mom and working like a dog like I do and having this like this like go-getter energy and mentality is exhausting. Yeah. And like when you're talk to people all day, the last thing I want to do is go out. And go out and talk to And talk people. to yeah. people who I don't give a shit about. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I got to pretend yeah. that I care about these idiots. Yeah, yeah. I, I have no interest. He would do that and he'll go out to like five in the morning. Yeah. And like, and I'm not talking because he, do, he, he doesn't do drugs. He doesn't drink. It's like, natural energy yeah yeah. it doesn't work for me yeah. so are we're like not balanced in that way at all uh, that's interesting. and so that becomes an issue i'm just yeah. being honest yeah. with you to have, be honest have you so uh one thing that we we just talked about this earlier is that we we've been surprised so many times by the people we meet through the podcast where we think one thing and then we meet them and it's totally different like it just happened yesterday we had dave asprey on the show None of us were really looking forward to the interview, to be quite honest. Yeah. He comes on and, I mean, he's not what I thought. We, he was, we were firing back at each other. It was hilarious. He's quirk, quirky. He's teasing us. And I'm like, I think I like this guy a lot. Yeah. Totally shocked and surprised me. How, does that happen to you often? It happened or? with Dave Asprey, actually. Also. <laughs> yes. I, I watch him on, on social media and he comes across like kooky. Like yeah. not like, and then when I've actually met with him in person and interviewed him, I actually liked him See? much better yes, in person. Yes. He seemed much more of like a real human being than when he did when I when Who's I. Who's your biggest we, shock? We, we so had yeah. him on Zoom almost two years ago, and we never and still didn't care for him. Yeah. It wasn't until he got in person then we were like, oh wow, okay, I like this guy. I yeah. could see that. Like, in fact, I think he's supposed to be on my podcast again too. Funnily enough, but um, who has that happened with? So many people. Uh, who shocked you the most? Mm -hmm. Is there anybody that you're like, oh wow, um, that's totally different? Oh my god. So many people who I who I both. liked or disliked. Either way, either way. Yeah, either either way. way. I mean, if you want to talk about who you dislike, I know. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say yeah, that's probably dangerous. That happens. I wouldn't say dislike. There's been a there's been one a couple people who've been on. This is what I find happens a little bit when they seem so engaging and 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 um, affable online, and then you meet them, and they're like completely the op. Not yeah. that they're they're highly. This is they they're highly. Um, affected and they want to have like their everything is like is for like the camera or for the interview yeah. or they take themselves too seriously who have I had on though recently that I've who I was like oh wow this guy's actually not bad or this girl's not bad Gosh, that's a good We've question. We've had a lot of those. We've had a lot of What do you think of Mark Cuban? Uh, did you know I liked him before? Him. I liked him so much. He was, my, he was probably in my top five, three yeah. Did you favorites. know him before the podcast? I or? met him. Oh, okay. And I'm like, you're coming on my podcast. So yeah. that happened because I was trying to get to him forever. And then I ran into him at an event and I went up to him and I'm like, <laughs> I'm so-and-so, oh, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, when are you going to come on my podcast? Now that you have this big company that you are the pharma pharmacy yeah. thing, maybe you can come on. Da, da, da. He's like, okay, I'll come on your podcast. And then I, he got, gave me his information and I harangued him as, of, as I'm sure you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And then one day I like, was like, fuck that guy. He's never even emailed me back. I'm going to email him right now. And I was like, Mark, when are you coming on my podcast? And like, did, there was no like, there was no like bullshitting around. <laughs> and he wrote me back in like two seconds. And he's like, um, I'm going to be in LA tomorrow shooting a shark tank. Do you want to do it then? And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so I rearranged my schedule and that's how that happened. And he came to my house. Like, this is what I love about him. There was no pretense at all. He shows up, drives himself. He drives himself in an old beaten up Lexus that looked like, you know, it could have been like, you know, some, like it could have been like the cashier at Ralph's car. You right. know what I mean? Totally non-pretentious. And I was like, her, I was like, basically, I'm like, this is the car you show up with? Like a 1987 Lexus? I mean, aren't you like worth, I don't know, $8 billion? And he's like, yeah, but I like this car. I don't really care about... And I was like teasing him about the car. And I loved how down to earth he was. And at the same time as being down to earth, 
he had um he had like a like 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 a dickish uh streak in him where he that you can tell he doesn't give a fuck yeah. he he will say what he wants if he thinks something he's gonna say it i really appreciate that personality type yeah. and but also at the same time like knowing who he is having a humility about him and having this like down to earth quality i how do, really how do you like pick that. your guests for your show are these just people you're in, interested in or? as people I, what i do is i i don't care if someone's famous not famous I don't look at the following count. Like I don't do any of that mm -hmm. because I think all of that is a bunch of shit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then when, when I have done that thinking, you know, Oh, that's the way again, maybe that will help me with the, with like, you know, we can, we can uh, collab. Yeah. Exactly. It ends up being a terrible podcast because I, I'm so disinterested yeah. in what the person is. Mm -hmm. And I hate these internet marketers. I refuse to have these, you know, mastermind coaches come on my podcast. I will not have, I refuse to have it. <laughs> yeah. I want to have real people who I can have a real dialogue with who mm -hmm. have like real time, real advice to give yeah. that is practical, actionable, and that they've had the experience. I'm not interested in having people on who are coaches, who their only thing that they've ever done in their life is, is basically yeah. coach you to buy their program. Yeah. And therefore now there are seven or 10 figure income because they basically like completely hustled you out of your money because they're good at funnels and good at like sales that. tasks, <laughs> I know. which is what it's all become. Yeah, I, I hate that. I, so much of it's I, crazy. It's, and, I you would, know how much is driving me oh, crazy. Okay. I'd be ta posting about it all oh the time. Oh my God. I, I, I love you for it because yeah. I talk about this incessantly because this is what the world has become. It's if you're, if you are a good internet marketer and you have that quality down automatically, that means you're a good motivational speaker and you're a good, uh, yeah, you coach. know, everything you're knowledgeable and, and, all you're the, kind of and you're the best serial entrepreneur. Yeah. I want to get my entrepreneurial advice from actual entrepreneurs who've done the thing, scaled the business, built a business, yeah. have failed on a business yeah. offline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, maybe then we can. It's talk. like that book. It's like uh, how to make a million dollars, teaching people how to make a million dollars. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, get out of here. But I feel like it's become, it's become so, it's like harassment because every post now yeah. is somebody yeah. selling you their, Mastermind, and now you're spending twenty five thousand to up to like two hundred and fifty thousand on you just, these coaching. You programs. just said something though that's I think so important because it bothers the shit out of me too. It's on my mind a lot because I, I can't stand how much of it I see. And you said something I think that it would, would make it so easy for the average person who's attracted to all these people yeah. to to filter through this. I'm not paying for your coaching business unless I know of a business that you built outside offline. If you haven't done something in the real fucking world at least once or twice or three times, and I want the guy or the girl who's done that 10 times. 100%. I want, I want, the, I want the Mark Cuban type of personality who's like, Tried to build 30 yeah. companies, failed at 15, was successful on 10, okay, and killed it on one. Like, oh. that's the person I want to hear from. Not somebody when you ask them, well, what's the business? Oh, well, I have this coaching business. I know, but what's the business you built? It's my coaching, but no, that's not, that's, right. well, that's how business, you're manipulating people to give you money. Right. Well, their business, what they say their business is, is teaching you Others how, how to, to make be a coach. It, yes. How to make money online. That's not a business. That's a pyramid scheme. Uh, that's all that is. And it's also like, I find like, the, it's all about these funnels and these master. So what I don't understand is these people are now spending up to like $200,000 on these masterminds where you're now sitting in a room with a bunch of other people who aren't where they want to be. Yeah. Or maybe they are where they want to be. Yeah. But like you're now paying for people's contacts to what to go to a spa. Yeah. And to like I've been I've been approached by like all of these masterminds to enter their masterminds. And it's all the same. Like, well, in order to get into this mastermind, you have to be making this amount of money yeah. and be at this level. And then you're going to pay this amount of money. This Now you're going to pay this amount of money to be around like-minded people yeah. at like some resort. And I'm like, I don't need to it. basically, yeah, I don't want to pay for friends. That's, that's the bottom line. It's I don't like want to pay for friends. You know, but that's yeah. also why it works because why it, why it's perpetuated. Right. And there's so many of yeah. them is because 
you have people who don't possess the same kind of skill sets that we have to go and mm-hmm. meet people and build relationships. And then they get put in, they, they pay to get put in a room yes. with seven other people that are, in, or more that are at the same level as they are or above. And they make contacts and relationships. And then the way they justify, they're like, I guess I really didn't learn anything at this. Seminar but, I this so and so. but I met so-and-so 100%. who helped me with this and they were struggling with that. And it's like, and so they go, oh, that was worth it. And exactly. then they do the next one, and then they do the next and one. And then they do the next one and the next one. That's reverse, uh, what is that, where you're, you're confirming what you did backwards to make yourself feel better. Like, oh, oh com- I spent 200 grand. Yeah, but I met that person, so I guess it was worth it. It's like, yeah, they're trying to make some feel feel better. Well, they, the way they're going to justify it is basically say you got to put your, and I and I agree with this concept, but I don't want to agree with how it goes, it, well, how, it's, how pervasive it is, is you're putting your yourself in a room where possibility can happen, where opportunity may happen sure. based on the approximate, like by the proximity of mm-hmm. who's around you, right? But- if you took the fifty or a hundred thousand dollars to be in that proximity, what would happen if you took that hundred thousand dollars and yeah. put it towards the actual business? Yeah. Or put it towards digital. Let me marketing? let me ask you something about that. Oh, you're here. I know. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm you're glad you noticed. Yeah, you're very Hi. focused over there. Um, <laughs> you guys have a lot in common. Um, yeah. So you're very good at uh, getting people's attention, at uh, putting yourself out there, at finding these very specific guests that you want to interview. Now, somebody like we get this question all the time and people starting podcasts that are really focused on like interviews and that's not our uh, dynamic per se. But so if somebody was to kind of start up their podcast and, and seek out these types of guests, like what's sort of that formula? What's worked the best for you? Obviously, there's a, there's going and meeting in person places where people are. Uh, what's the email process look like? What's the call process look like? How do you like figure all that? That's out? a good question. Well, this is a thing, right? I think you take all your transferable skills. So like, I, I'm not coming into the situation cold, right? I have some good experience behind me. I have a, I have a few contacts in my back pocket. And so what I do is I create a pitch and then I would DM them. If they don't answer, then I will email them. I will find a per. I basically use my ten percent target method, which is part of the bigger, better, bolder book. So my entire philosophy is this thing called the ten percent target, which is making ten attempts at whatever you want most. Mm. And I use that to get the guests on my podcast. So you don't give up until you've made at least ten. At least ten attempts. Mm. And the truth is, if if I don't make, yeah, because it works. Because the truth is, most people don't even make one attempt. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody makes two attempts. So if you're somebody who makes three attempts, four attempts, you, just on pure volume, you stand out right there, yeah, right? you're yeah. going to, you're yeah. going to, you're going to have success. And I promise you, if you don't get to that goal, because I'm not saying you're going to get to that goal every time, but going through that process, another opportunity will 100% present itself that you never knew existed. So to give you an example, let's say I want make, you know, make someone up. I don't know. Who else? Like whoever I want. Uh, let's use Mark George Cuban. Lucas. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, George Just Lucas. selfishly. <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use Mark Cuban just because it's an, e- an easy one. Sure. I want Mark Cuban on the podcast. Well, um, I will DM him, but I didn't get a response. So then I'll like find some email. I'll email him. That never went anywhere. Then I found a friend who knows a friend who got to him, asked him. He kind of was like, I'm too busy now, you know? Uh, I went through another friend. That's now four attempts, five attempts. Then on my sixth attempt, I went and met him. Not by, I mean, he was at an event that I was at and he was far away and I made my way to him. him. Yeah. And I asked him, I got, he bit, he bit. And then it was still not a confirmation. That's still the number six attempt. That's still number Mm -hmm. six attempt. I emailed him that seven on the eighth email, on the second email, he so happened to be in LA, and then I saw him the next day. That was that was attempt number eight or nine. Yeah. Now, a lot of times I'll do a similar thing. I won't have the opportunity to go to an event or see someone or know someone, but usually by the 10th attempt, something else would have like hit where I would get in contact with somebody and they're like, oh, I don't know Mark Cuban, but have you heard of so-and-so? Yeah, He's yeah. done this amazing thing. Yeah. I can, I'll do an intro on text with you. And then that has happened, which then led me to any, you name them, a Lindsey Vaughn or whoever it is, where 
it may not be that particular person, but it took me on an entire path that was as fruitful, if not more. Mm. So what I try to like instill in people is just because you don't have that thing now, that doesn't mean that will ha- that won't be the situation tomorrow. So get it with like, you know, get the, the, be brave for 10 seconds and go for that thing and just start because it's really easy to overthink and then think to yourself, well, I don't know that person yeah. and I'm well, not I already good bothered enough. them and yeah. they said no, yeah. they didn't respond. And mm-hmm. they said yeah. no, or I'm like going to be annoying and da, 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 And then therefore like, just do it. And like, you're not any worse off tomorrow or today than you were yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Jen, and Jen I, what makes you nervous? It. What makes you anxious? Because you seem like you don't really get nervous or anxious. Like, are, are, are there things that you do in your business or job or are there things that you don't do because you're like, I don't want to do that? I think I get very overwhelmed when um, with administrative stuff. But like, besides that- Thank God you, got, you hire somebody. I'm sure that, can, that you have I, someone I'm that bad at that though. I'm really bad at like delegating mm. a lot. Oh. And so what happens is I end up putting too much on my plate and I get a lot of anxiety from that. And what also gets me nervous or anxious is you're going to be very surprised, but I still do it. And, and, and I do it because I hate it is public speaking. Yeah. I hate it. And I have one <laughs> coming up on Thursday. Where? Um, it's uh, it's for a bunch of CEOs in downtown LA, oh, wow. and you know I I get very nervous. Do you hire a speech somebody to help you with your speech? And, and well, practice? I had a woman who initially helped me, but I find what happens in those situations is then I feel like it's like I'm reading something and it's mm-hmm. not Before natural, yeah. right? So I'm trying to like find the balance of like taking my notes and and making it much more comfortable. Yeah. But it's kind of because I hate it so much that I keep on putting myself in that situation because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to get better with more practice because yeah. that's what I practice, Just right? Reps. Are you, do you have ADD? Are you ADHD? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah I'm really bad with like time. Ma- like I'm very bad with yeah, that. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you seem neurodivergent. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm the same way. And you're you're listing all these Did different you say, things. What would you say neurodivergent? Neurodivergent would be is the, like the umbrella term for, you know, ADHD and, you know, like <laughs> dyslexia and all these other things underneath that category. Really? I, how, why do I seem it? Uh, because you're, you, like you said, time management, you hate administrative disorganized, but then you have other qualities of ADHD. Like you'll go after things and right. you'll get then hyper-focused. you have the ability to hyper-focus. I mean, you're in a room full of people with Yo, I feel ADHD. like, I know, you know, There's I degrees feel, all over I the place. feel yeah. like every, a lot of successful people have it. I know you, Adam would have it. I don't, th- I didn't think you Sal oh, had I'm it. I'm the worst. He's worse really? than the group. He's yeah. worse than I am. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's the, uh, uh, a majority so a much lo- a disproportionate percentage of entrepreneurs. Have could you ADHD. could you imagine? I'm gonna I'm gonna share you some some behind the scenes stuff. That's yeah. About him to confirm like Please. how bad he is. Right. So okay. nine years we've been doing this. Right. And yeah. this is one of the founders. We have meetings every every Monday. Like literally, he can't fucking sit still no. in his meeting about his own company, learning about his own money, mm-hmm. learning about all the things he really? needs to do. Oh he God. can't so sit painful. without getting grabbing his phone and getting on his phone like for nine years. Katrina has to like yell at him to give me your phone because he can't. They're very understanding. And then he'll start crushing the can. Him? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Five minutes is I, all we I get. have two. There's two. It's like a light switch. It's either hyper focused or none. Yeah. There's nothing in the middle. It's Are terrible. you serious? It's yes. super frustrating. Yeah. 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 Just really, disinterested really in the conversation. Like, just it's really tell, tell me yeah. where we're at in a month or whatever. Like, wow. Yeah. Thankfully, fun? I have partners I can trust, you know, who handle uh, those, type, those types trust. of things. Trust. These are like your brothers. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I'm like your sister. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When can I, can I start coming on like once a quarter? I really do love you guys. We oh, can you do too, that. Justin. We have, we have a. <laughs> A, I'm glad you included me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Yeah, I, mean, no, I, no. I like to tease you. No, no. I, I think, well, I mean, you've already become a... How many times have you done it now? This I is three know. or four. Is it, I think this is four, isn't it? Oh, probably four. Yeah, yeah. yeah this so. has yeah. got to be four. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've been on your show twice. You've got so far. Three. Yeah. What was that? This is the best lighting you've got. I know. So thank far. God. Yeah. I know. I appreciate Everyone's you noticing. Like, do don't be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Sal? She's already been here three yeah. times. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't be disappointed, though, because it's not might not be the lighting. Oh, I know. <laughs> might be Watch me. me get the clips and be like, what the fuck? I wonder what I was thinking. I'm telling you. I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably what's going to actually end up happening, you know, because that's just kind of the part, another part the ADD, right? But yeah. anyway, um, what was, no, yeah. I, so I've been on yours, what, three times what, or four? Twice. Three times? Maybe. I no, think I'm going to be on the third time. No, this is going to be four too, because you were in LA twice. Yeah. And then I was, we did one together. Okay. 
and then this will be four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we did some YouTube together too. At did one point. oh, we did the oh, that cooking was at your show. House. I yeah, forgot about did. that. Oh my god, we did the cooking show. I love having you on because you're so knowledgeable. Mm. Have you mm. met other okay other podcasters like? Uh, no, you, you're my favorite. And I, by the way, now you say that, that to everybody. You be blew honest. smoke up my ass at the beginning. I can now blow smoke up your ass okay. at the end. Okay, <laughs> you guys, I tell it's reciprocal uh, ass blowing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> smoke blowing. You used to revive people back in the <laughs> evil times. No, but I literally tell everybody that you guys are like legit my favorite like oh, thank you. i feel such a like nice connection with you guys i've met a lot of podcasters as i'm sure you have too but you know what like none of them take your like thank none you. of them oh. thank you who else is your favorite like, who else that you do you guys like besides yeah, well we me? love you max lugavere is great uh love him to death we have a lot of good friends in the space uh who else would we put up there that were like really up there mike matthews mike matthews you would great. actually mike would get it off oh mike matthews uh, is he called Supplements? Metabolic Mike? Is no, that no, 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 that's a different Metabolic yeah. Mike, And Mike's He's cool. That Mike too. is cool too, although we're not like tight with him. But uh, yeah. Mike Matthews owns the company Legion. Oh, yeah. and and I he's guess. and he's someone like don't waste don't go over the foam if you could ever get him in person. Yeah. He never he's like a hermit. Talk to him off air. And he's a like, hermit. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, he's a hermit. He never leaves his his house and he stays home. So that, Brilliant. He is unfiltered. Zero zero yeah. filter. Yeah, you'll have zero. A oh, filter. and where does he live? Florida. Will you set me up with him? Yeah, of, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. I'm going to be in Miami. I'm actually speaking at the biohacking conference, and I'm nervous exactly because I don't yeah. like to speak in public. Um, maybe I can interview him there. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll connect you guys. Okay. Who yeah. else have you guys had? That yeah. Let me think who else would be like a, a, a blast like that. You I mean, I love Dr. Gabriel Lyon. She's, She's awesome. Great. We're good She's friends great. with her. Uh, I'm trying to think of all, uh, you know, we have this thing though, too, that these, cause remember there's three of us and you and I are a lot alike. And then these guys are a little bit different. So like, we also have a lot of like nerdy friends yeah, that, yeah, are, yeah. that are like I, awkward. I like, and, like nerds. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jock yeah. friends. That's why I've been on your show ben time. Greenfield yeah. is up there like that. Yeah. He's like really weird oh, for a lot of yes. people, but we connect with him. Yeah. So, but he was very weird at the beginning and over time he's grew. I even think Max has a little bit of that side to him. Like, yeah. Yeah. Max, Max is, he's definitely like, got once that Once you get to side. know, cause you've had Max. Oh no, Max and I are friends. Max, I've done his show. He's done my show i yeah. like max max is doing very well right now very well yeah. hey how, tell me about um pb since we're talking about people let's talk about some people how's yeah. pbd patrick Bay david oh yeah did he ever get back no that's you why know i got why a I'm very asking. funny i get, I get annoyed i get annoyed with i know i got a phone call from i got a, i picked up the phone and it said like potential spam on the phone call and yeah. i don't know why i was like distracted yeah. shocker yeah and i answered the phone and it was one of his sales guys asking me why I love the Patrick Bet David, oh no, value tainment. Yeah. And I was like, huh? And I realized they were trying to sell me into a program. <laughs> They've been ever since we have like talked and been connected, like I get hit with them all the time. Did I, you get an affiliate code? To they oh, yeah, they, yeah, like it was so They text weird, me, right? they call me and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm not interested in paying for anything. I said, he can come on our show and I'd love to interview it's him. It's him and Grant Cardone yeah, was, was like, notorious yeah. for that too. Yeah, yeah both I mean, those guys. Well, yeah, Grant. I mean, called like crazy. They, what are they selling? I mean, I said to the guy on the phone, I'm like, um, how did you get my number? Because I'm like, Patrick's been yeah. on my show. And yeah. he's like, I'm like, he's been on my podcast. And he was like, uh, Arthur oh. Brooks is another guy. Oh, I like oh, yeah. him very did, much. Did you have him on your show? Of course. Yeah. Oh, I love yes, him. Yes, he's such guy. a nice guy. He's a, a genuinely one of the best people I've ever met in my yeah, entire he's life. Like the a... more you get to know him, the, m the more you're in disbelief that someone mm -hmm. like that exists in the world. Yeah. Well, it's so funny that you say that. I really like him. I texted him yesterday, coincidentally, telling him about this woman that I had on my show who wrote this book called Practical Optimism. Mm -hmm. And she sh he should have her, but he never responded to my text. Well, yesterday? Yes. He'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, sometimes it takes him two or three days. Do you know what that guy does? He's like- He's amazing human. Oh, he'll but... meet with like the Dalai Lama. Or I know. Oprah, yeah. world leaders. Yeah. 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 Oprah, he's, he, but he'll, he'll he's, respond. It takes him a couple days sometimes. By the way, that was one of the, I really liked that podcast and I really like him as a human being. He's such a nice person. Yeah. Him, I really like. Yeah, he's up there with you know what he did? You know what he did? So what? he, you know, he listens to our show too, but um, I had some personal- Right, he's super, so into fitness now. Yeah, so. I, so, I had some personal struggles. Him and his wife call in to check in with with me and my wife and talk all, and so, it's such a nice man like genuine just great guy and it doesn't expect anything in return just a yeah good person i love that yeah. i didn't know you had some personal struggles i yeah. guess we're not as close. everybody has uh, personal. i struggles. know but you can tell i me talk later. about mine on the show yeah. well I, I guess i didn't listen to that episode no, no, you missed it, <laughs> are you okay yeah, yeah i'm okay yeah, yeah i'm all right you finished telling me. Finish telling me about Patrick but David because you have. Guessed. Oh no, that's basically what happened. So this guy called me and I was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" And like yeah. when he found he was on my show, whatever, he was kind of like, you know, felt very uncomfortable. Yeah. But like you know, 
I, I, that doesn't. Do sit you well. do you remain in contact no, with with him? Obviously not. Well, no, I mean, no, obviously yeah. not him. I mean, in general, like with like most people. Yeah, most. I mean, to some degree. Like there are people that I've met on the show that I was like, wow, we 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 clicked instantaneously and we became fast friends and we're friends now. Other people I liked, but we didn't kind of maintain. We like you know we'll text very very once in a while. Yeah, and there are other people I'll just like never hear from again. And there's those people that we know in common. We won't say that. You Ugh. can tell they're just after. I can't. They just even. want what they can get from you. Uh -huh. That's actually most of these. Those are most of the I social media people. Yeah, very transactional. Adam's better with that. Very transactional. Adam's better with that. He doesn't get affected as much, and he's more like, well, let's you know maybe we could work something out type of. I hate that. You I know what's interesting? It though, turns me you off said so something. Hard. I'm like, I'm, I love the the your ten your ten percent or ten percent target. I love that. I absolutely because it reminds me of sales, right? When well, you I mean, I, know I operate from yeah. that place with yes. relationships, but I've never put a name to it or called it anything. It's just that most people. But so I had a different way of doing it, though. So mine, the way I have done it with our relationships, is just I look for ten, like like ten, and I don't. I'm just using yours. I don't actually do ten, but it's like it ends up being a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. of ways that I can add value to people's lives. That sometimes it's just a text telling you that I'm thinking about you. That could be an email. That could be a, a DM. That could be like a phone call. That could be like a sending you over something. Yeah, yeah, it could be anything. It could be <laughs> I could uh, send you flower. Yeah. I've yeah. sent flower. I mean, I got flowers from you. That's right. That's right. That so, was so. But that was a couple of years ago. Can I get flowers again? Yeah. <laughs> that was really. I was so. We have a relationship now. I know. Now I'll just pick up the phone. But, <laughs> exactly. But should, that is Such part, a great, that's great part of idea. that's part of <laughs> um, and that's a lot of stuff that doesn't no one sees on the outside that totally. I think is really important and. It has to come from a place that's genuine and caring, right? So it's not like I have this like system where it's just like send all these people these superficial like the, things. Like the birthday card from the dentist. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it, it has to it has to be genuine, right? Yeah. And so yeah, that's something that and when you do that, like and people realize, oh fuck, he cares. Or like, oh my God, he knew you Right, remember. exactly. Like, like they then they then they open they bring this wall down and now you have this opportunity to build a relationship. And then I also will continue to do things for him because I rarely ever, I think maybe once I've might have asked you for something since we've known each other of all the things that we've done, rarely ever do I ask of something from somebody. Right, right. And so and then every once in a while there'll be like a small favor. I just had in fact. I just did this when we launched our our coaching program, and there's oh, there's, yeah. there's one person who's on my shit list right now, and I'm not going to roll him on the bus on the podcast. But why not roll? Well, listen, so because he's a friend of ours, and I and, and this is how I've always operated, where I do all this stuff, like, and then like right before we're getting ready to launch, the guy who we have that's are the, that's running this business for us goes, hey, do you think you could maybe reach out to a couple of big Instagram or like big social presence people in the fitness space that will co-sign for what we did i said yeah i literally set out like 15 text messages to all my fitness like people and literally all of them within 24 hours made me a personal video for all that except for one and then that one i sent like a little reminder text hey whenever you get a chance just you know let me know or hey i know you're super busy then another one then i sent like an email like he, or he goes oh i'm just super busy could you just send over my email i'll do it when i get back and i'm like yeah, yeah no problem i'll send it over to you and then i'm quiet don't say anything like that then i have sal like say hey just a little nudge just let him know that adam's upset that you didn't do that for him or like that and just dropped the ball. Didn't come through on it. And, and didn't apologize after? I, he did. I mean, he's a Paul, but I'm like, that. that's like a thing for me. Like, yeah. Because I don't ask. I don't ever do that stuff. Like, that's a very rare. I, and I'll always do 10 more things for you like that. And when I ask for like a small thing like One that. One day I'm going to ask for a yeah, favor. I was going to say Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. very Godfather-esque. You're very Godfather-esque. Godfather like, Motherfucker, I've done a lot of nice things for you that is way beyond what I'm asking right now. I'm asking for a 30-second iPhone. There goes the red carpet. And they did. <laughs> and they didn't do it. That would bother me, by the way, yeah, too. That yeah, would yeah. really bother he me. He eventually did, but it was too late. It was too yeah, that late. is too. It doesn't count. Yeah. I. So, by the way, you're just you were saying something earlier, and it's that's basically I think one of the things that I do just naturally. Like, if I'm very, I think my one of the things I am good at is remembering what people's thing is and uh, connecting dots quickly. So I will always, I proactively try to help somebody without ask like for them asking me to for that help yes. like i'll be like oh yeah i remember that that person was like needed someone like that to do that and i'll connect people i'll be a big connector for people and then um and when it's not reciprocated it really does bother me it's not like because i feel like like to me it's like a no but like, why can't like it takes two seconds to be helpful yeah. and to respond if yeah. you care about the person well i also feel like you i do the same thing you do which is again i didn't have a name to this 10 it's like 
it's not like I do it one time and I expect anything. I do a lot. I, I do, do a, exactly yeah, a bunch a of a bunch of things that I know that I'm either connecting or helping or doing it that. And then the one time that I might ask for this small thing or what that is like, come on, you know, like that's totally. Not, I mm. totally get it. Yeah, By yeah. the way, that ten percent target that we were talking about is a, a very strong sales training um, tactic. So like. When yeah, I get do like seven no's or 10 no's before right. you give up. And that when I get, when I'm doing speaking engagements and when I'm doing them, a lot of times who's calling me are companies to train their sales team. Yeah. Not just people and like, not like social media sure. masterminds, but it's to teach people to be okay with getting the word no yeah. or like hearing the word no yeah. and having their brain open up to like other ways of getting to a yes. Right. You know, right? full, full circle to this conversation, you know, we earlier talking about the, the being overly beautiful. That's part of why that becomes such a challenging adulthood for that girl because she hasn't been told no. She's been told yes. yes. Every, she's so beautiful that everybody wants her attention, wants her time. She gets every guy that she tries to go out with. Like, so she's been told yes, 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 her whole life. Yep. And then she hits the real world and business and stuff like that. It's like, business is not like that. Business is brutal. Business doesn't care how cute you are. So you Sometimes better- Sometimes it does, depending on yeah. what kind of business you're in, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Only fans, it does matter, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know? Hey, actually, no. You know what's funny about that? Like the, the percentage of women that actually make a lot of money is- you know, there's this this it's like winning the lottery. Yeah. There's this, cons this really yeah, personality oh, yeah. behind it. There, you know what there is? There's about drop ninety percent of them that are barely making a living showing themselves naked because of the Ruining one per the one percent that are taking up all the attention. So there's this wow, huge yes. it's billions of dollars being made and spent in there. And there's a one percent of girls that are mopping up all that. And then there's a 99% of them that are trying to be that, that aren't making but a normal wage. You know why though? I think the one, the ones who actually make the most money, not just the good looking girls, the people with fetishes who like certain <laughs> weird shit that they can find on there. Yeah. But that type of thing is what's happening on all the dating apps. If you do the, if you hear about the research yeah. on dating apps, it's the what one percent are getting all of the people, yes. yeah. and ninety nine percent are finding nobody. Because um, did you hear about the stat about men? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're about basically invisible unless you're like the six, top of yeah six feet. Did you hear that? Oh, oh, oh no, what are those? Oh, there's actually metrics. For there's like metrics. Yeah. Okay, so like okay, I don't remember. Like, don't quote me on the exact metric, but. Everybody wants a guy for women yeah. who are six feet and above. So guess how many men in the world or the U.S. are six feet or yeah, above? Like 5%, like not even? I think it comes down to like 14%. Okay, okay. But then with that, of the six foot now, men, of the 14%, how many are single? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So now that number drops to like 3%, right? Yeah. Who are making a living. Yeah. It comes down to like, Point, it comes down to it's such a all nominal these women amount. Seeking out this, like, very few men. Yeah. Right. Because hmm. because if you want a, a guy who's six foot feet, who makes Single, six makes figures, good money. makes any, and, and then, and then who's actually attractive at yeah. six feet, who makes money, and who's also yeah. single. I mean, it comes down to such a nominal amount. But those are the, so that, that person is getting all the action yeah, and, and all the these swipes other dudes are, yeah. are invisible. Are, in, mm -hmm. are completely invisible, which is why. Uh, porn is up and less uh, relationships are up and blah, blah, blah. Yep. And for women, it comes down to the same thing on for different metrics. But this is why people are not having relationships anymore. Yeah. And like are it's crazy. single it's crazy. and isolated, which is then causing so much violence and causing like depression yeah. and like it goes on and on. It's like a ripple effect. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. we, we don't, we didn't realize that we evolved it, uh, with natural limitations. And once we remove those limitations, we didn't consider the consequences. We only thought of the potential positive. So it's like, oh, I have all this, I can meet all these different people. And nowhere in history, right. no time in history, would you have access to that many people at that many times with it, with pictures and information, whatever. Well, and it's just unnatural. Isn't this also uh, the the evolution of monogamy too? Why we that's, evolved? That's to, why successful. So the reason why we evolved to to be in you mean monogamous like relationships. Of the fitness. Or yeah, no? because, well, no, because because what, the, the, think the, what the, the app is the wealthy doing. The, uh, man, the wealthy, attractive rich in man power would take all, all the women, women, and then what would they do? It cause an uprising. Oh, of, you mean that of, way? Yeah, yes. you have lots of violence. Yeah, and lots of violence, and trying to overthrow the person who's taking all the women. I just so. So what would be the so to me? I think a big problem is that people don't really understand their value in the marketplace. People over-index who they should be with based on who they are. 
And that's another issue that why people are single and not having relationships. If you're a five- The grass is always all the greener. No, right? if you're a five, if you're a five, why should, uh, but you want to date a 10. Like why, but, yeah. right? Like, and you won't accept anything below a 10. Yeah. Hmm. And so that happens a lot. You over They should make an app that tells you what you are. I know. I wish <laughs> there was Sorry, actually. you can only date these people. <laughs> like you're actually a four, yeah. you know, like yeah. maybe just accept it you, because I think life and people would be much happier that way. Yeah. Versus yeah. being by yourself alone and without any companionship yeah. because you don't want to find somebody who's 5'11". And the next thing you know, you're, you know, now you're past your... Now you live with cats, yeah. nine cats. And drink wine over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just offended the Damn. cat lady that listens. Jen, we can always, we have oh, so man. much fun with you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I always, I always have always, so much fun with you. Always fun yeah. to talk to you on I mean, show. if we weren't Thank on a time constraint with this podcast, I'd say oh. we did have going for like four hours. I know how we go for I, sure. I mean, how long have we been talking, by the way? Hour and a half. Yeah, 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, don't apologize. It's a blast. Everybody's been having a lot of fun. Absolutely. Okay, how long are how long are your podcasts normally? Interviews are typically roughly an hour, hour and 15 minutes. But the longer ones is because we had a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. good. I'm glad. Okay, yeah. good. I would I would not want to go one minute un, like below what you no, normally. No, no, no. no, no if no, you're under an hour in your interview, we that's, that's what you know. Bad. That's actually how you know. We're trying to push you out. Exactly. Yeah, 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 we could have right. 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's bad. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, yeah. good. So that I'll always remember that now. 61 minutes minimum. Yeah, yeah. Minimum. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Minimum. <laughs> Six foot tall minimum. Okay. Oh yeah, exactly. Six foot exactly. We're doing ours next, right? We are, Jen. So we'll have fun. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, and I'm not going to tell them. You tell them about the about your book. Bigger. Better, better, bolder. Jennifer Cohen, check out her book, check out her podcast, everything. Everything you do is awesome. Thank yeah. you so it's a good much, time. you guys. You. Thank you for having me again. I'll Thank be, you so I'll much. I'll be back in the next quarter. You. Yes. Right. Deal. How do you like your chair, by the way? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it I great? love it. There's a lot yeah. of power in there. I don't think you're getting it back, by the way. Oh, no. You said we'd switch for yours. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you said that. All right. Damn. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jen. Thank All right. you. 